So, yes, and uh, and we're live. If all goes well, I'll look it up in the order bus stream. Yes, we are. Okay. So welcome uh, everybody. This uh, afternoon uh, session, um, we'll be hearing. Uh, like six presentations, and five of them happen to be uh, GeoPython related. And the first um, presentation here will be um, about PyGeo API. And uh, we have uh, these two gentlemen here, Angelos Tsotsos and Tom uh, Kralidis. I will introduce them shortly. So uh, Angelos, he is uh, from Athens, Greece, uh, remote sensing researcher and software developer at the uh, National Technical University of Athens. But he's also OSGO president and, uh, of course, OG an OGC member, cont contributor to various OSGO projects like OSGO Live, also on this uh, conference, PyGeo API, this talk, PyCSW, and more. And, I, and he's even open SUSE member. And, of course, you may know him as uh, a Ubuntu GIS maintainer. And we also have the honor here to have Tom Kralidas from Tom Ren, Toronto, Canada, and Tom is a senior systems scientist for the Meteorological Service of Canada. Uh, Tom is active in the, also in the OGC community, and, and he's committed to free and open source software, as are we all. And, and and he's founder and lead developer of numerous open source geospatial projects. Um, so here, like PyGeo API, but uh, he has also developed on many other projects, like uh, some he initiated, like even Mapser for GeoNodes, PyCSW, QGIS, PyWS, OWS lib, and the list goes on. Um, and he, that doesn't enter his charter member. Oh. Did I mention that Angelos was OSGO president and Tom is also uh, involved in uh, OSGO um, organization. He currently serves in the board of directors. And uh, that's about it. So I'll give the floor uh, to you. Thank um, you. Excellent. Thomas already shared his screen. I will go to the back side and folks, you can use the chat. And there's a, and the other tab for questions. And uh, okay, floors to you. Great, thank you. Um, thank you for for attending this talk. So Angelos and I will give a, 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 an update on the uh, on the project. Note that uh, there are uh, there are others in the audience who are part of the uh, the project team here. So any questions that you have that uh, th that um, we may not be able to answer. They can certainly be addressed. Uh, we can get in touch with the other developers on the project. So we initially um, uh, put forth this project and pr and presented it in Bucharest. And this uh, uh, today's presentation will just give you will pr basically provide an update on some of the new features, what we've been up to, and what the future holds for the project. So it's been a long um, it's been a long two years, and we have a lot of updates, which is good. Oops. So project overview. Uh, the project was initiated in 2000 and in 2018. It's currently an OSGO uh, community project. It started in the same, uh, along the same time where a lot of the efforts around the uh, OGC API um, evolution of API standards started to come about. So as we started to hear about um, things like WFS3, which is now OGC API features, uh, the PyGeo API project was sort of born out of a lot of the sprints and hackathons um, that were that were occurring at the time, and it's evolved into uh, a project that does a number of those standards and uh, uh, is also a reference implementation. So, uh, core principles of the project again: OGC API is uh, front and center. Um, we are a reference implementation for OGC API features, and we implement a number of the other standards, which will I'll show a matrix of what our current support uh, is in the project. Um, given that we support all the OGC API uh, uh, principles, that means we support REST, uh, um, you know, the RESTful principles, 
as well as JSON as a first class uh, encoding. We also support HTML um, and we provide uh, obviously open API support for, uh, for the service description as well as a Swagger UI. There's an international team, which is, which is growing. Um, so it's across time zones and it's across uh, uh, countries. So there's numerous contributors. Um, it, is, uh, it is quite the feat to try to get uh, project steering committee members uh, meetings going with all the different time zones, but we are, we are doing our, our best. The project did uh, create a project steering committee as a result of uh, RFC one. So we have that governance in the project. And we stand, we stand, it, it, uh, we should say that we stand on the shoulders of many projects that uh, that are upstream of us. Technical overview: uh, underneath the hood is a core abstract Python API, and we simply put uh, a web a web framework layer on top of it. Our default framework uh, continues to be Flask. We also support Starlet um, more for async, although Flask is uh, is increasingly supporting async with uh, Flask two. Flask 2, if I, uh, as, I, as I recall. Um, there's also work to, uh, to implement something in, uh, in Django, for example. We have a very simple YAML configuration, which allows you to bind, uh, connect all your data sets, the Paizu API, as well as make uh, uh, some service metadata available. We have automated open API document generation and data binding. This means that um, Paizu API is, is able to you know, go through all of your data sources and get all the right information around columns and data types and so on to give uh, to, to output a rich open API document, um, which is tightly bound to the underlying uh, data sources. And that can either be and that is done upstream or sort of offline, uh, and we and that's cached when uh, PyGeo API is running for uh, for performance reasons. We sp we support a, a robust, very robust plugin framework. So we have a factory pattern in the project where um, we have a, a, a concept of a, a data provider. So a data provider can either be features or coverages or records or, or, uh, or stack collections or, or other things. And the idea there is that they all have a, a common uh, Python API and folks basically implement um, or developers can implement and, and extend their, uh, that, that plugin framework to make their own plugins. So uh, it's very easy to deploy, which we'll uh, cover a little bit later. And we have minimal core dependencies. So one principle of the project is you should be able to stand this up uh, really, uh, really quickly for the base functionality. There's a look at the architecture again. So right in the middle is that PyGeo API common. That is the core Python API. So in principle, you can run, you can run PyGeo API from your own application and never interact with the web. I mean, that, that, that's how it's built. We, but we do put a web layer on top to take care of all the, uh, you know, the, the, the pure HTTP things such as, uh, such as routing and so, and so on and so forth. And we have an unlimited number of uh, data, data providers that we could support. We have some on board in the project and we initially started out with uh, Elasticsearch as a provider as well as a native, very simple, but native, um, CSV and GeoJSON Geo data providers. The project has uh, matured to uh, support a number of data providers, and more importantly, it's uh, it's helped other de it's helped downstream developers create their own plugins that they manage in their own projects. That uh, that uh, that is very powerful. So again, here's what we have out of the box um, in terms of uh, providers and, and hooking up your data. So we have an Elasticsearch provider. Uh, Mongo, there was MongoDB support uh, added um, a while back. Uh, Juiced, who's the session leader here, implemented the OGR uh, provider, which is awesome. And that gives you access, obviously, to uh, you know, hundreds of formats. We also support a, uh, uh, a coverages concept. So on board, we have an X-Array provider, as well as Rasterio. Um, Francesco, who uh, implemented the Tiles provider, we have a, a Minio support, as well as a, a basic directory tree. In uh, early of 2021, we implemented OGC API records, and with that, we provided uh, providers for document, uh, sort of NoSQL style um, backends. Again, you can uh, you can implement your own, which I think is 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 really the power. One of the big powers of the of the project is that if you're a, a Python developer and you're not scared to get your hands dirty and you want to connect your 
your your data. Um, you can do so in any way you wish, and even in a very customized uh, fashion. I should also mention that we provide a processing framework. That means the uh, uh, we're we're able to expose Python workflow and pipelines as OGC API processes, and that's really powerful because the uh, you you can basically expose any kind of workflow or any um, you know any functionality you want, which uh, which is made available through the OGC, OGC API processes specification. Along with that, we have uh, support for job control. So imagine uh, asynchronous processing where you send the request and uh, maybe the, the process takes a while to complete. So we have support for job control. We have a simple backend in TinyDB, but again, that is a, that is a plugin, um, that is a plugin framework. So you can make your, you can set up your own job control plugins to plug into your maybe, you know, specific machinery that you have in, uh, in your project or your requirements. But the idea there is that to support uh, in asynchronous processing, we need to be able to record status and progress and, uh, and and figure out when a job is done and so on and so forth. So again, uh, we have a default capability in the project, but we, uh, we provide the ability to implement your own. Implementing your own plugin. So you can either implement it as a core plugin and propose it to the project and maintain it, or you can develop and maintain it into your own repository. And we would, in our, in our configuration, you would just point to your own repository in a in a um, you know Python dotted path kind of way, as long as it's installed in the uh, your 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 uh, package is installed in the system, and basically you don't need to make any changes to PyJoe API. You make simple changes to configuration, and you're automatically integrated. Uh, finally, we support Schema.org and things like JSON-LD, which allow for mass market search engine optimization. And we have a number of different deployment options, such as, uh, well, our default is on PyPy. There's packages in Ubuntu GIS. We have a Docker, uh, um, we have a Docker setup in the uh, in the code base that's available on Docker Hub, and we're on uh, Conda and FreeBSD, and there may be others at this point. And with that, I'm going to switch it over to Angelos. Uh, thanks, Tom. So let's have a, an overview of uh, the core capabilities of PyJo API. Uh, you see here the landing page where we have uh, default HTML landing page, and this helps uh, the, the the output of, of the service to be accessible to crawlers in, in, on the internet. And that's all about the, the new OGC APIs uh, being available in 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 a, in a JSON and HTML format. So here is this is the landing page. This is what you see when you when you when you go to the first page of PyJo API and. And there you can see uh, at the demo instance where we have collections, we have uh, stack assets, processes, happy happy definition. It's it's all there on the first page, and where you can see also the, the service metadata. Let's go to the next page, please. Uh, the open API is 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 the core of the of the of the service, and it's core in OGC APIs in general. So. Uh, the definition of the service is, is available through an open API document. It's, it's there. So it, it, it was named Troyer in, in, the, in the past and can be used to, to do development and test the service directly on, on the browser. Uh, it's available also as a JSON object, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's automatically generated from PyJo API uh, from the configuration of, of, of the service. Next slide. So, so PyJo API started initially as an OGC API features implementation. That 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 is the first uh, of the OGC API of the OGC APIs that that got finalized there earlier. And uh, PyJo API, as Tom mentioned, is the is the reference is a reference implementation for OGC API features uh, core. And here you see uh, the, the, the 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 page where we see the features of of, of a single collection here in, in PyJo API where somebody can see a map. Uh, and this is just the HTML representation. Obviously, somebody can create and develop another uh, any other representation as an output format. Uh, here is the HTML, but obviously there is a GeoJSON uh, output as well in, 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 the, in the service. Uh, next. 
Uh, next, uh, we implemented also support for OGC API coverages. So there's uh, there there the coverages are are uh, implemented later in in the project and and uh, there there are providers uh, the XRA provider and and also the the OGR provider where where somebody can can directly access raster data from from the PyJO API uh, service. So this is all already uh, in master. It's it's already supported. It, it's not yet finalized as an OGC API yet but it's in the process of being finalized and we are hoping to be also an implementation of an official implementation of that uh, next we have we support ogc api records uh, me and tom are in the ogc api records um, uh, standard working group so we are very keen to imp implement the, implementing the, the standard uh, as fast as possible and we, we will also so pycsw later today uh, so the OGC API records is directly uh, implemented in PyGeo API. Um, it's again based on OGC API features, but with uh, with some catalog-oriented features that have been added to that to that standard. And it's already there; it's supported. And uh, there's a meta search support in QGIS directly for for searching uh, records in, in QGIS, for example. Next. Uh, we also support OGC API tiles. Uh, th this has been this has landed in, in, in the master branch of, of the project uh, quite recently. Uh, it's also another OGC API in, in progress, and we already support it, and and, and we can support uh, vector tiles directly from from a database uh, right to the to the API. Uh, next, and. Already, Tom mentioned about OGC API processes. So we support also processing as part of the OGC API uh, APIs that we support in PyGeo Geo API. And uh, as Tom mentioned, we we have uh, we have already implemented uh, the processes uh, API. Somebody can uh, implement a, a processing uh, algorithm directly and plug it into PyGeo API, and then it will be available for from the landing page and uh, and and available to to run a process in a, in a on a remote machine running PyGeo API. Yes, next one. Okay, so this is the the second OGC API that has been uh, has been finalized recently. I think a few weeks ago. So this is this is the environmental data retrieval API, and this is already this also is based on OGC API features, uh, but with some extensions for environmental data, for environmental data retrieval, and it's already supported in, in PyGeo API. Tom has has implemented that uh, recently, and there's support right right out of the box. Next one, and recently we also added support for spatiotemporal asset catalog this is the the, the well-known stack uh, stack has been around for for quite some time as an extension of OGC API features it's also a catalog oriented um, uh, specification but it, it's a community standard uh, but it's now going to be related to OGC API records uh, and, and we are trying to to, to make things uh, work together so it's already implemented in PyGeo API, and specifically, we implement the static catalog uh, directly. So if you have a, a, a collection of stack items, uh, you can just point the configuration of PyGeo API directly to those to those stack items in your drive, and then this will be available and published through through PyGeo API. Next one. Uh, also, we have HTML templating. Uh, which means that you can <clears throat> you can create your own HTML templates and and make your look and feel the way you like it for for PyGeo API. Tom, back to you. Thanks, Angelos. So uh, we've been quite busy since uh, since Bucharest. So just a, a timeline of some of the new features that we implemented. A lot of the features were implemented um, and landed as part of the uh, OGC API. Uh, virtual sprints, which have been a very, very valuable exercise to um, have access to the the folks developing the specifications, as well as other developers of clients, servers, or parsers or serializers. So if you haven't been to an OGC API um, sprint uh, event, I would highly recommend it. Um, they are very valuable for uh, um, 
for implementing these APIs and, and, and having these discussions with, uh, with some of the specification editors and doing some interoperability testing as well. Selected projects. So here's a, a sampling of some of the recent projects that we're aware of that, um, that implement and use uh, PyGeo API. So one is a project that I work on. This is with the Meteorological Service of Canada. We have a, a, a data dissemination platform, API platform called MSC GeoMet. And this is basically Canadian weather, uh, climate and water data. Uh, we have real time data as well as archived, uh, uh, archived uh, data records. Um, mostly around numerical weather prediction uh, model, uh, forecast model output. We also do have a hydro, the Hydrometric Archive of Canada, as well as uh, uh, climate station data archives that, uh, that go back you know, over, over 100 years. We've recently started working on, um, well, we've always supported OGC API records and we've, did, we've done, or sorry, processes, and we've implemented uh, raster data extraction through OGC API processes, and we're currently working on extending our uh, raster support to uh, deal with uh, uh, underlying data stores, which are, you know, czar or other types of data cubes. Uh, Francesco and Juice worked on a COVID-19 uh, demo server uh, at the time, and uh, it provided, uh, you know, official data. Uh, it was an aggregator of official data and, um, and actually went out to services that already existed. There was some uh, Esri integrations, if I if I recall, through uh, through OGR, but it was a powerful powerful demonstration and a good example of how quickly um, uh, things can be put together to provide an uh, an important resource resource. So we that we have that on our demo sites. So if you go to demo.pygeoapi.io, we have a list of demos there, and the uh, the COVID nineteen demo is uh, is one of them. The U.S. Internet of Water. Uh, has been uh, an important collaborator to the project. They, uh, um, specifically through Duke University, they have an effort in the Internet of Water to, uh, uh, to implement modern water data uh, infrastructure. So they've implemented a reference feature catalog, a, a stream gauge metadata catalog, as well as a sensor things data demonstrator, which is actually a PyGeo API plugin, which looks like an API features but it's actually talking to a sensor things API uh, in the back. So all that to say is a re really innovative and uh, interesting ways that we can see uh, the project being used for all sorts of different domains and, uh, and workflows. As part of that, uh, the USGS uh, water folks have developed a, a number of their own plugins for water data processing uh, and doing uh, 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 other OGC API processes through their High River uh, client. They have a project called High River. The links are all there in this uh, in this slide, but they've also uh, implemented a PyGeo API plugin cookie cutter. So this is anybody who wants to implement the plugin, you can download this cookie cutter that they've uh, implemented and it'll get you up and running um, uh, quickly and efficiently to implementing your own plugin, which is, uh, which is awesome. Back in Canada, the Natural Resources Canada, uh, has a is developing an open disaster risk reduction platform. So open DRR, it's an open source platform. Uh, there's a link there on GitHub and uh, all of their API provisioning for their data resources is happening through PyGeo API. So it's a nice, it's a nice example of, um, of putting PyGeo API into an entire framework of you know, data generation and then publication and also uh, extensive use of, I think they're using AWS on this one. So you can see how it can, it can be implemented in a cloud, cloud environment. Across the pond, um, Euro Data Cube and uh, our friends at EOX, they've implemented uh, uh, PyGeo API uh, processes for headless notebook execution um, that's, uh, that can be used in workspaces. So this is a really innovative way of, uh, of using the project for processes. And we've participated in, at a number of sprints, which I've mentioned uh, previously. So just closing up, uh, in terms of roadmap, this is what, the, here's the, uh, the scene of what, what's implemented and what's in store. And uh, we are planning on, uh, well, can't see it in the slide, but we are planning on implementing OGC API maps and styles in the future as those specifications become more mature. Uh, we wanna do an API refactor to make things a little bit more uh, modular. We wanna support transactions. There's some work going on for an admin UI in case uh, somebody doesn't wanna work with 
the configuration and everything through the command line, uh, continued stuff on schema, schema.org, content negotiation, and we're now part of the OSGO Live project, so that's that's great. Uh, again, we're looking into uh, implementing a, Jang a Django front end, and uh, we've had discussions with the GeoNode community on making PyGeo API a data backend for, for that project. So closing out, there's a number of support mechanisms uh, and companies that uh, you can get in touch with if you need dedicated support for feature development for the project. And with that, I will uh, leave you with these links here. I'd like to thank everybody for their time and support, and I wish you a good uh, Phosphor G 2021. Okay, thanks, uh, Angelos and uh, Tom. Um, and in the meantime, we have uh, gathered uh, uh, quite some questions, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just bring them here in uh, in the screen. And because this one was upvoted uh, four times, so it's at the top. And you can see the question here. Uh, so the question is, PyGeo yes. API versus the user server, can you compare? We had the same question yesterday, I think. Right, we had this question at the, uh, at the doing doing uh, geospatial with Python. So it's, it's there's a number of ways uh, that it's hard to compare. It depends what your use case is and what your uh, uh, and what your workflow is. I can I would say it depends on your data volumes, your configurations, your environment. There, there's so many different factors that um, that you can use to do to do a comparison. I know in the old days we used to have a, a WMS shootout at the uh, Phosphor G events. I'm not sure whether one day that we might have an OGC API shootout. That might be that might be something interesting, but. Uh, I will say for the Python developer who uh, who who wants to use something um, very modular and be able to tie it into their own pipelines, um, that's one of the value propositions of the project. And um, uh, we also have you know very high on interoperability, much like the other projects. So that that's uh, that's all I'll say for now. That's a big question, a but answer. hopefully that helps. And, and we have more questions, but it's a nice we have, have uh, upvoting. And this is the second one with three votes. Can it handle large amounts of data? Um, I would say yes, because of the way the OGC API specifications have been architected. They allow for things like uh, paging or, or, uh, or, or different ways of subsetting the data. So, um, you know, wh whichever data server you're going to, whichever data ser server you query, if you ask it to return a million records, that's going to take a long time, no matter what you do. So there's other strategies, um, and I would say most of it is in the uh, is in the hands of sort of the way the APIs are architected, as well as how your data is set up in the back. But can it can it, hand can it handle large amounts of data? I would say yes. We are handling. Uh, you know, a multi gigabyte archives um, for for one of my projects. It doesn't seem to be an issue. There's work that goes on in the back end to make that uh, performant and to make that available, but um, it seems to fit well. Okay, we have time for one last uh, question. In the third place, um, says, uh, "What about OGAC? No, wait. I sorry. It was this question. What about?" OTC API maps, do you plan to support it? That's a good question. We do plan to support OGC API maps. There was a uh, OGC API sprint, virtual sprint that concentrated on maps and tiles, I believe, earlier this year. We, we implemented a prototype that I think is uh, it's in a branch somewhere in, uh, in, our, in our code base. Um, you can use any backend that you want. In our case, what we did is we used the, the map server map script library and we use map server as only a map renderer. So the idea there was that we can generate a map file on the fly, use a uh, map script to generate that uh, PNG image, if you will, and support OGC API maps. So that is in scope. And um, we're also looking at implementing uh, uh, OGC API styles. Um, okay. having, said, having said that, once those specifications are ratified, we'll, we'll take a deeper look for sure. Okay, thanks. And uh, well, we were within time. Uh, I want to thank you once more, uh, Tom and uh, Angelos, for uh, for this great presentation. And uh, we hope to see more of PyGeo API. And thank you. Uh, so, 
Thank we're you. off to the the next speaker. Um, I will remove the other speakers and the screen.